Welcome to Everlasting Love. My name's Patricia King. We have a special guest with us today, Dennis Walker, who is the apostolic leader of the Dunamis Family of Ministries. He's, he, he's an overseer of many different churches and leaders. And Dennis, it's wonderful to have you with us today. And we're going to talk about an encounter you had and a walk of obedience that you had with the Lord involving a tent. Yeah. Now, before we, we <laughs> talk any more about that, I just want to read a scripture out of Exodus 33. It's about Moses who pitched yeah. his tent when he was out in the wilderness. He pitched the tent outside the camp, a good distance from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. Wow. And that is where he went to seek the Lord. Yeah. And every single day he would go and the pillar of cloud would descend and the Lord would speak to him face to face as a man speaks to his friends. Yeah. And um, but. You had an encounter with the Lord involving a tent, and so we want to hear all about it because oftentimes God will call us to an act of obedience to follow Him in order to bring us a special visitation, a precious revelation, mm -hmm. but He sometimes asks us to do something in the physical realm first. Yeah. So how did this all begin? Well, actually, I, I was attending a conference where you were speaking, and I right. think you maybe I don't do even know that. I do remember that, that okay. conference, yeah, in and, Abbotsford. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. right after the conference, we'd, we'd been activated in, in um, Heavenly Encounters and those things, and, and we were on the way home. We were driving from Abbotsford, B.C., down to Seattle for our flight, and we actually were going to have like six er extra hours before the flight. So I was asking the Lord in the car, what do you want us to do with six extra hours? And the Lord suddenly gave me a vision. And the vision was I saw that we were in this park in the presence of the Lord. And uh, uh, so I, I turned around, told everybody else, there were five of us in the car from Las Vegas. And it turns out that everybody at the same time had had a similar vision. My daughter had seen that we were beside a lake. Somebody else saw that we were in a forest. And the other three of us saw that we were in a park. And suddenly we passed a sign on the freeway that said, this exit, Lake Forest Park. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, that's wow. our exit. So we go down the exit, and for 45 minutes, the Lord spoke to all five of us in the car, which turns to take. The exact same thing. I'd never had that wow. happen before with everybody hearing at the same time, the because same thing. Because God is so near to his people. And yeah. he, he speaks today. You know, we read in the Bible how he spoke in the Old Testament to his, his prophets. And, of course, in the New Testament, he spoke through his son, Jesus Christ. But also, you know, men of God like Paul knew the voice of the Lord. You know, Christ's um, disciples knew his voice. He said, you know, the voice of a stranger you will not hear, but you'll yeah. know the voice of your shepherd. Yeah. Well, and isn't it th what it's all about is relationship? That's right. And his sheep so hear often, the voice. Yeah, we, you, we often say it's about relationship, then we go back to religion. Yeah. Wow. And who's ever heard of having a relationship without conversation? That's right. You know. That's right. So we're hearing the Lord and, and we're led around this lake and suddenly we're driving through a forest. The lake is on the right. Now, this is in the natural. This is in the natural. Right. This is in the state of Washington. Right. I have no idea where we were because we had no maps. We we're just right. following the Lord. Uh, I might have been around Lake Washington, I think might have been where it right. was. But suddenly the Lord said, slow down and look on the left. We did. And there's a little park entrance, All it's a little sign that said park entrance. And we go in there. And the first thing that happened was one of the girls that were with us, one of the ladies, um, Maria, got out of the car and she saw this field that she'd seen a week ago in a vision. And in the vision, she'd run out to the middle of the field and laid out in the presence of the Lord. And she started hollering, it's my field, it's my field, wow. and ran out there and laid out. I and found so she a, did what she saw in the right. vision. Yeah. That is so cool. And I had found a, um, a, like a big table rock thing. It was huge, big boulder under some trees. And I laid up on that thing and began to say to the Lord, I'm a living sacrifice. And suddenly I began to feel the presence of God just sweeping over me in waves. And I laid there for the longest time. And at one point the Lord then said, I want, want you to go home and buy a tent. When you go home, I want you to buy a tent. And I'm going to meet with you in the tent. And I'm going to restore to you the Feast of Tabernacles. And I got excited. I knew that the Feast of Tabernacles was a, a feast that had not yet been fulfilled. Other feasts had been fulfilled. Right. And wow. that it was all about living and learning to, to live and be with God. And for the viewers that might not know about the Bible feasts, there's, you know, 
seven feasts right. within the scripture that were, were mandatory for the people of God to keep. Yeah. And each one of those feasts, if you study out Bible prophecy, it, is, it, it, it parallels um, the workings of God for the redemption of man. Mm -hmm. and, and the final feasts are, are yet to be enjoyed that's by right. the people of God within the realm of time. Yeah. So. So that's what I, I got excited about was the Lord said he was going to restore to me the Feast of Tabernacles. Meant to me that I was going to have a special way of living and being with God. Explain to our viewers exactly what the Feast of Tabernacles referred to, like um, what it was in reference to in the yeah. Bible, like it was an actual feast in the Bible where yeah. they came together, but it, it paralleled a prophetic revelation of what God was going to do. Can you share that with, with yeah. the viewers? I, I can share a little bit about it. It, it. What I know is that it was the last of all the feasts. It was the seventh feast. It happened in the seventh month. And so those things are very significant that God is about to fulfill his plan and purpose. You know, the very number seven means fulfillment and right. that he's filling this up. and. What I, I knew was that the Bible had commanded them to make booths or make That's tents. Right. Even today, Jewish people go out of their homes during this, this feast period and they'll stay out in a tent in their backyard right. in a, uh, just a symbolic act of communing with God in a new way. And I think it has a lot to do with Moses' tent of meeting. Right. And, and it has to do with a perpetual living and dwelling with God for That's all right. eternity. That's right. Because when he, he, he finally comes and we, we are in that place with him, we'll never again not be in any, we'll never be in another place. We'll always be with the Lord. With the Lord. Tabernacling right. with him. Yeah. Wow. So uh, that's what, what excited me so much. I actually got down off the rock after I heard the Lord say this and I went over to a couple of the other guys that were with me and I told them what the Lord had said. And while I'm talking to them, uh, suddenly I see this stump of a tree behind them and it had had the top and all the branches lopped off. It was about 15 feet high with no, tr no top or, or branches, leaves, nothing. It was just this stump. And while I'm looking at it, the Lord spoke in my heart and said, could this tree live? And I said, why? Why would that be important that that tree should live? And um, the Lord said, my church has been like this tree. They've wow. done their own works in their own ways. And if I were to judge it today, I would all the, the limbs would be cut off. Wow. And, but he said, I'm about to bring my church to a new level of life in me. And I screamed at that trunk to come alive wow. and that the church would also come alive. I began to just intercede for a new life to come in the church. And th this is a significant vision I had because I got home and I immediately went out and I bought a tent. Actually, before I came home, I, I bought a tent at an all night open place that sold tents. And so I bought this tent, <laughs> got home. My wife hadn't even greeted me yet. And she hears me pushing furniture around in the living room because I'm there in the living room putting this tent up in my living room. And she comes out and sees all this and says, doesn't this go up outside? And I said, not this one. It's going to be inside and I'm going to be in it. And I began to tell Lenny wow. what I'd heard. And I told her, I actually said, protect me from disturbances and interruptions. If they come knocking on the door, just tell them I've gone to heaven. Yeah. So she did that. She really protected my time. And I began to get in this tent and pass, just spend hours with the Lord. And I would do what it says in, in um, Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. In Colossians 3, 1 and 2, it simply says, seek mind. those things yeah. which are above. Basically, first verse is a, a commandment to mm -hmm. seek third heaven. Yep. And then verse 2 tells you exactly how to do it. It exactly. says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Yep. And so I began to set my mind on things above, and I began to see into heaven. Had yep. Open, an open heaven encounters there in the tent the first night. I love it. Let's just take a look at that scripture right now because I think some of our viewers are going to actually do exactly this. Maybe not inside of a physical tent, but you know, inside of their heart, I believe that that they're going to posture themselves yeah, as you that. did, because you had some amazing encounters um, following your act of obedience. But. For those of you that are watching, grab a Bible and, and I, I hope you love your word. Read the word of God every day. It's a, it's, it's a book of wisdom. It's a book of instruction for you. But it says, uh, Colossians 3 verse 1 says, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, 
not on the things of the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. And so there's, yeah. there's, there's real clear keys there for you. If you want to experience that glory that is yours in Christ, the key is to seek those things above, to set your mind on the things above, to set your, your passions on the yeah. things above. And, um, and that's exactly what you did. Right. And sometimes a prophetic, you know, act like being inside of a tent just pulls you into the focus. And yeah. whatever you focus on, that's what you empower. That's right. Well, and I, I, I've learned today that, you know, the tent probably is not all that important. Right. What really was important was that I got away from all the distractions that had right. kept me out of focus. Right. And what I, what I really learned in the tent was how to focus. And when I started focusing on the things above like it commands to do, then I became aware of the fact that I live in heaven. Right. I didn't have to go anywhere. That's right. It was not an out of the body experience. I live in heaven. That's why the verse in, in the word of God says, he has made you to sit together with him That's in heavenly right. places. That's it's right. not a future event only. That's it's right. present and future. Yeah. A lot of times people don't understand that, but I love the scripture out of John 3, where Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, who is a, a very religious leader. Yeah. He understood the scriptures. And Jesus um, was trying to explain the born again experience to him, but he was confused about it. He says, yeah. well, just a minute, how can that possibly be? I can't go back into my mother's womb and be born again. So he was thinking in an earthly dimension and not in a spiritual mm -hmm. dimension. He was, he was just thinking on one level. Yeah. So Jesus said to him, he said, um, he he who is ascended into heaven is the one who is descended from heaven, the son of man who is in heaven. That's right. So he, he's saying to Nicodemus, I am the one who is in heaven. Yeah. But I'm also on the earth right now at the same time speaking to you because Jesus lived in two dimensions at the same time. That's right. And I think oftentimes we think, oh, heaven is eons away, but really it's only one realm away. Yeah. And whatever realm you're focused on is the realm that you are in. That's right. And so a lot of times, and I, I do just want to give this one more scripture because I love this, this topic. And in yeah. our glory school, we have um, a lot of the scriptures unpacked on this, mm -hmm. on how believers can actually access the heavenly dimensions while they're still living within the realm of time. Yeah because time is just a capsule inside of eternity. Right. And so you can live as a born again creation with eternal life living on side of, inside of you. You can actually live in the eternal dimension. At the same time, you're living within the realm of time because the eternal realm is not confined to time. Now I know that that might be a little bit much for some of you to unpack right now, but let's go to the scripture because in Hebrews 9, Good and one. verse 24, it says, Christ did not enter a holy place made with mere hands, a mere copy of the true one. And that's in reference, actually, to the tent, uh, you know, of the tabernacle, that's the right. old, old Testament. <laughs> For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, which was a mere copy or a prophetic symbol, like what you had, of the true one. But he actually entered into heaven itself. Right. So in the scripture, holy place equals heaven itself, yeah. according to this particular voice, verse I mean, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Well then in chapter 10, as he goes along, continues to speak of the same uh, work of Christ, the finished work of the cross and, and how the sacrifice opened the way. It says in verse 19, therefore brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place. Now it's not talking about the holy place, the tent, in the natural, mm -hmm. that's just a symbol. That's right. It's talking about the holy place, heaven itself. That's right. And it's now talking to believers. Yeah. He's saying, therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place, that's why it says you can with confidence go mm -hmm. before the throne of grace. Right. With boldness, you can. That's right. Now, yeah. while we're in the earth now, you can enter heaven itself now in your faith encounters with God. Let me read on, I'm gonna show you. This is right inside, your Bible will say the same thing as what my Bible says. This is out of Hebrews uh, 10 that we're reading in now, verse 19, it says, therefore brethren, since we have confidence to enter 
the holy place or heaven itself by the blood of Jesus, which was already shed 2,000 years ago mm -hmm. by a new and a living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, we already have this great priest over the house of God, let us draw near. Mm -hmm. This isn't let us draw near after we die in the earth. This is let us draw near now. How? It even tells us how. With a sincere heart, in full assurance of yeah. faith. Let us draw near to heaven itself, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We have absolute access through the blood of Christ into this holy place of God. Absolutely. Because of what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. You are not an ordinary human being. Yeah, You're a neither new are you. creation of Christ. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not an ordinary human being. Yeah. I'm an ambassador of Christ. You're an ambassador. That's right. We're children of the Most High yeah. God, and so are you. And we're going to hear more about the encounters that have come out of this experience he had in his tent of meeting right after this break. Jump into the realm of heaven with Dennis Walker's Training Your Spiritual Senses Combo. Read Catching the Initiatives of Heaven to Bring Supernatural Results to Natural Problems. His six CD teaching set, Spiritual Senses, will teach you to use all your spiritual senses and truly understand how the dimensions of heaven impact our lives with the three heavens teaching. Call now and order television offer number 166 or visit xpmedia.com and get the Training Your Spiritual Senses Combo for only $35. Order now. Recent discoveries in science are revealing the miraculous healing power of God like never before. Dig into the Word of God and the world of quantum physics with Patricia King, David Van Covering, Katie Souza, and Joanne McFadden as they bring amazing insights into divine health and healing power. Join us for Quantum Healing in Phoenix, Arizona, August 10th and 11th, and take a quantum leap into healing, health, and wholeness. Breaker Team Partner today. Go online to xpmedia.com. So Dennis, you are now in this tent seeking the Lord by the hour, every single day, hour after hour after hour, with your mind focused on Him. We have to ask you what happened? What were some of the encounters that you experienced? Well, one of the first ones was I was in a green field in heaven and the Lord told me to come follow Him and I'm walking down this pathway that goes through the field and the field was marked by round stones and as I'm walking along I look down at one of the stones and the stone has eyes and is looking at me and this of course I have no grid work for this what a stone with eyes and the Lord began to tell me he said everything in heaven is living there's nothing right that's dead he's and he said that's why the stones will cry out if you don't. If you don't right. praise me, they will. Everything's said, full of life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why the trees of the field can clap their hands, be is because everything is living substance here in heaven. And so I'm, I'm walking along, and then he says, remember the tree that had no branches? Oh, I do. And he said, my plan is to begin to bring my people up to an awareness and an experience of the life of heaven and that which has been dead will come alive. Wow. Now, was this like a series of vision or like was it like an encounter? Like I, I've heard some people say that they actually walk through a portal and it's like in 3D and some have vision and some have impressions in the mind. How, how do these revelations come to you? Well, what I, what I remember is that um, I, I knew I was still in the tent. At any moment I could have interrupted this and just been back looking at blue nylon in the tent, you know. Right. <laughs> but what I was actually experiencing, experiencing was a living experience. 
Right. Um, and I'm seeing it, I think, probably in my mind, but I'm in the picture. It's right. like I'm there. And, right. Uh, I don't know. If I would say it's 3D, 2D, or almost you know, like a dreamlike state, maybe. Like a dream, yeah, very much like that. Although I was cool. wide awake. I just want you to know, uh, also, as viewers, that if you want more teaching on how to hear the voice of God and how to enter into these revelatory realms, because you can step into visions too. You know, you can hear the voice of God as accurately as as, as Dennis does. And if you go on xpmedia.com to our store. We have um, uh, one book called Eyes That See, another book sa says Ears That Hear, they give you, you keys as to how to hear and see the voice of God. And also in our glory school, we unpack this a lot. So, you know, we just want to make sure that they can get yeah. all, the, all the training That's they can. Teaching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're, you're in this encounter. Yeah, and then um, another, I'll, I'll go to another one that that I had, I was again in a, a place that was like a green field and the Lord brought me under a tree and we sat under the tree and he actually unpacked for me and began to explain John chapter three. Wow. And what he began to show me was John three is not principally about the, the born again experience. It's actually about living in two dimensions. Yeah. Because the whole thing is about that. I mean, right. Jesus started out saying you can't see into heaven unless you're born again. Right. Then he said you can't enter into heaven unless you're born of water and the spirit. Right. And then he talked about being like the wind and the wind blows, nobody knows where it comes from or right. where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. And then there's one verse that really, really he highlighted. And he said to Nicodemus, he said, um, I've told you earth, you don't, I've told you earthly things right. and you don't believe. What would happen if I told you heavenly things? And so when I got to that verse, the Lord just began to say, what do you think it meant for me to say, that I've told you earthly things. And so I'm thinking, going into heaven, seeing into heaven, being like the wind, being born of the Spirit, and he calls those things earthly things. Wow, I've never looked at it like that. Yeah. And I, I began to realize mm. the only way those things could be earthly things is that they're meant to be experienced on earth. Come on. And then he goes to the next one, which is a most amazing verse. He said, you know, the one you referred to, mm -hmm. John 3.13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who descended, yeah. the Son of Man who is, who is in, in heaven. heaven. That's amazing. So he's letting us know that he was bi-dimensional, lived in heaven and lived on earth at the same time. That's fascinating. And I just want to confirm, it says in verse 12, it says, if I told you earthly things and you do not believe. So he's, he's saying everything I've told you is earthly. That's right. How will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? That's right. And then in another portion of scripture, he told his disciples, there are many things that I would like to speak to you, but you, you are not ready to receive them. That's right. But the spirit, when he comes, he'll reveal these things to you. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Woo. And what that means is we have so much more to experience right here. See, I think one of the strategies of the enemy has mm -hmm. been to make everything future. Yeah. Put it all off in the future. He doesn't mind if you believe these things as long as you don't try to experience them here. If right. you just put off your heavenly life to some future date, he's fine with that. Right, wow. But what Jesus did was he made it present tense for us. And what I'm hoping for personally is a future life in heaven that's even more fulfilling. Paul said, now we look through a glass darkly, but then right. face to face. Yes. But I want all of heaven that I can get today. I don't want to put it all off. Did you find that since your time of seeking the Lord in the tent, that there was acceleration of vision of miracle Absolutely. encounters in your life? Because it's all about our focus, isn't yeah. it? It's all about when we turn to Him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, yeah. with all of our soul, That's with right. all of our strength, then heaven comes to us. And actually, those are the evidences that those experiences you're having are real. Yeah. See, these are not just imaginary experiences. Right. They're not just mind games. Uh, these are real realities of heaven, and there are three levels of evidence that I've been able to see that show us that these are real. One of them is, is character formation. Yes. That when you're spending time with Him in heavenly places, your character starts changing. Yeah. I really didn't know about that until one day I was coming out of my tent, and my wife said to me, she said, I love it when you spend time in the tent. And I said, well, why? And she said, because you come out tender. And I, I was an A-type choleric personality right. that, you know, I could get a lot done, then we'd deal with the survivors afterwards. Right. But um, as I spent time with him in the tent, 
all of a sudden my whole life began to become more tender and she could recognize and what it. was the second one the second one is an explosion of healings and miracles that I saw happen wow. in my life awesome. as a result of awesome. the Awesome. And the what tent. was the third one? And the third one is eyewitness accounts of other people seeing you in heaven, wow. telling you where you were and what you were doing. Very cool. This is so exciting, isn't it? You can have these encounters too. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just ask that you would open up the hearts, the minds, the passions of your people and increase encounter with them an increase of encounter for them, Lord, in revelation, in miracles, in signs, and in wonders. Amen. Amen. You start expecting that because you're going to have it. And in the meantime, remember this, God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. Go tell the world about that. Go tell the world about Him. Jump into the realm of heaven with Dennis Walker's Training Your Spiritual Senses Combo. Read Catching the Initiatives of Heaven to Bring Supernatural Results to Natural Problems. His six CD teaching set, Spiritual Senses, will teach you to use all your spiritual senses and truly understand how the dimensions of heaven impact our lives with the Three Heavens teaching. Call now and order television offer number 166 or visit xpmedia.com and get the Training Your Spiritual Senses Combo for only $35. Order now. Recent discoveries in science are revealing the miraculous healing power of God like never before. Dig into the Word of God and the world of quantum physics with Patricia King, David Van Covering, Katie Souza, and Joanne McFadden as they bring amazing insights into divine health and healing power. Join us for Quantum Healing in Phoenix, Arizona, August 10th and 11th, and take a quantum leap into healing, health, and wholeness. Become a Breaker Team partner today. Go online to xpmedia.com.